right, boys. As you well know, I've been practicing my four jaw technique. Um, I'm planning on uh, trying to put Adam in his place. Uh, I don't know how well I'm going to do, but uh, we're sure going to try. And uh, I have another little twist to the old uh, four jaw competition. So uh, let's take a look at uh, what Uncle Tom's got got in mind. All right. So who the heck does not like a competition? And in particular, uh, uh, um, a four-jaw competition. How, what more fun can you have? So uh, what I did was uh, uh, KBC donated this chuck. And uh, what I did is I went ahead and I got a second one. So what can you do with four, two, <laughs> not four, two four-jaw chucks? Well, what you can do is you can build a a little competition machine that holds two chucks and allows them to spin independently and allows two competitors uh, names to be unnamed at this point point in time uh, to go head to head so we'll call this the head to head four jaw machine um, anyway so I've got most of the materials together and I got a plan and uh, I'm going to pull some of this paper over here and we'll do a little sketch real quick and, um, and you'll see what, uh, where I'm headed with this idea. So uh, it should be fun. Okay, so instead of, instead of drawing on the table, what I decided to do was uh, use some of this brown paper, uh, a la Brady, um, the uh, math guy uh, on uh, YouTube, for those of you guys that follow him. Um, It'll give nice contrast with the Sharpie here. So what we're creating here is we're creating a uh, kind of a machine. Um, let's, draw, let's draw our fake chuck here. Like so. Okay, one four jaw. All right, and then we're going to have a second four jaw over here like this. Something like that. So we're going to set these two chucks up at some distance here between these. Okay, yet to be determined. So that's that's our first question: is what's what's that dimension going to be? I don't want to be too close to uh, too close to Adam, and he probably doesn't want to be too close to me. So uh, we got to figure that dimension out. Um, then um, we're going to have a uh, some kind of bed here, like this of some sort. Now I have a big piece of tubing over here I was thinking about using for that. And um, this probably needs to be steel. Uh, that way our uh, magnetic base uh, indicators go on there real nice. All right. And then the other thing that needs to happen here is these chucks need to rotate. So we need to support um, a, uh, a shaft or a bearing arrangement here uh, that allows these to rotate. Now if we're going to put two chucks on there, uh, they need to rotate independently or else Adam, or, Adam and I are going to be fighting each other. So uh, um, these have to be freely rotating uh, independent of one another. Okay, And then we need some kind of, uh, some kind of connection here. And I'm just kind of sketching this in. So I like to do this with design work. Um, you know, you got no business on the computer until you have something in your mind um, that uh, that's worth drawing. Okay, um, the computer tends to focus you on fine detail uh, too soon in the process. That's just my personal opinion. Uh, um, so you need some uh, you need some material to work with before you go to the computer. Okay, you know, a lot of times it's just a sketch, or you know, maybe it's something really simple. You can go straight there. So okay, so that's the. Uh, um, that's kind of the general layout, okay? And there's a couple questions here. So what's this distance here to here, right? We need to figure that out. Um, we need to figure out, so we would have something in the, in the chuck here that we're going to indicate. And so our indicator would be on here, something like that. Um, and so there's going to be some overall length, I would say, okay? So this plus this, okay? So we got a length here. And then, uh, you know, does it sit on the bench? 
Does it sit on a bench? Question mark. Or is it on a stand? Uh, question mark. Things like that. Okay, so we got a question there. We got a question there. And then um, I would say that uh, I'm going to call this another, another question here. Bearings? Question mark. Okay, so let me do this. Let me. Uh, I'm going to go see what I have for bearings and I'm going to bring some other stuff over here and we'll continue on with uh, the next phase of the design. All right, so I got the two chucks uh, just on a couple pieces of channel here so that I can uh, I can figure out some of our, uh, our missing information. So let's uh, let's look at uh, this first question here. How far apart do these want to be, right? So the way I think about that kind of stuff is there's a guy over here He's got a chuck key. This guy over here has got a chuck key. And we got our hands up here. So this is way too close. So let's 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 scoot that out. Let's give it some some humanoid number there. How about eight inches? Let's try that. That's 200 millimeters. Yeah, it's still too close, I think. Uh, you know, Adam's got such small hands, small delicate hands. Uh, I don't know, uh, that might be far enough apart. Go, let's go a little more. Oh, there we go. You know what? That feels better. So, all right. So we're. I'm thinking uh, that's pretty good right there. Um, we're not going to interfere with one another uh, unless we try to. <laughs> and uh, but we're close enough that uh, um, you guys can see all the action, and uh, it's nice and tight. It's real personal. I can harass him. He can harass me. So. Uh, yeah, I'm going to say that uh, that number is, you know, around 12 inches, approximately 12 inches or approximately 300 millimeters, okay? All right, so that's a good one. All right, so the next number we're working on is uh, our center line off of the table here. And um, let's see, let's get rid of those for now. I think that's going to be driven by this. So normally on the lathe we would be kind of at an angle here. Let's just go on sideways here. Let's try that. No, that's not bad. I'm almost at the I'm almost at the limit of my noga here. Can you can you see that? Yeah, you guys can see that. I'm almost at the limit of my noga. So maybe uh, maybe what we need is to be closer to the edge here. So where are we here? Five. Let's let's scoot in a little bit like that. Try that. Somewhere there. Okay, this feels pretty good. And then beyond the uh, beyond the chuck, we're gonna need. Oh, I don't know. I'm gonna say 10 inches beyond the chuck there. So uh, let me let me note that down. So you know, you, you guys can see what I'm doing here. Um, so beyond the chuck, I'm gonna say that's. Uh, um, around 10 inches, okay? So, you know, this is called human factors engineering, right? Where you kind of work out some of the human ergonomics to this thing, you know, what feels right uh, when you're operating some equipment, right? And um, so another important thing is uh, the distance from this center line to the, uh, to the floor, right? Let's, uh, let's put that on there. So from there to the floor, we want that number, okay? And you know that'd be similar to kind of a normal lathe, okay? I'll measure my uh, my machine over there, and uh, this actually feels pretty good for me, but uh, might be a little low for uh, for Mr. Adam. We have about 40, uh, 1.1 meters, you know, 44 inches, something like that. This could be higher, and I'd be okay with that. So, I don't know, let's say, let's say 40, 46 inches. Okay, I'm just gonna call that. I don't want to fuss around with this too much. All right, all right. Oops. What's next here? What else are we missing? Oh, uh, distance from here to the uh, to the bed. Uh, uh, let me change the camera around. I'll shoot from a different angle, and you guys can see this. All right. Let's see. 
let's try raising it up. Let's try raising it up a little bit. Oh yeah, I want a little bit of space in here. Oh yeah, this feels better on the indicator. This feels more, more like a lathe. <laughs> more like a lathe. All right, so I'm going to call that number. All right, that number is going to be six inches to the center line. All right, from the, our tube, our tube side there, our tube top. All right. Okay. Well, that's actually. Oh, what did, I, did I get that one? Ten. So we get twelve. Whatever that distance is. Uh, all right. I'll work it out from there. Let's uh, let's talk about bearings here. I think that's uh, everybody's wondering about bearings. So let's let's talk about that a little bit. All right. All right. Let's talk about bearings here. I found some. I got some bearings here, uh, and these are salvaged out of a, an old pallet jack, I think, and they're still in pretty good shape. It'll work fine for uh, um, for this project. And uh, what are these? Six two six two oh fours. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Six two oh five. Six two oh five, and rubber seals. Okay. So I think those are uh, 25 millimeter ID, yeah, 25 millimeter ID and 52 OD. They're metric bearings. Okay, so we got, and let me know how this looks, okay? Because this is uh, stolen right from uh, Brady Heron, uh, the math guy. Um, he kind of coined the uh, the brown paper and the sharpie to do equations on, and the contrast is actually really nice for. Uh, um, for this this kind of stuff. All right, so let's draw our chuck again. All right, all right. There's our four jaw, our big fat key. All right, so what we need is we need a mounting plate, right? Okay, so we got a mount, and then let's reduce that like so. All right, and then. Um, this whole assembly needs to turn, so our shaft is going to be fixed, okay? And we need a couple of bearings in here, like so. I'm just kind of drawing this in quick cross section here, all right? Um, and um, then we're going to have a shaft like so, okay. That goes through the uh, through the bearings like that, okay. So if that slides on there, that will rotate. So this needs a hole all the way through, right? All right. So if we have shoulders, that will retain the bearings. So it's a bore like that, okay, and. That goes on, so then we need to retain this whole mess from coming off. So it can't go this way because of our shoulder, but we got to keep it from going in, in that direction. So let's put a, uh, a fastener in there and retain it. Um, so that's up against the back of the chuck. So actually, let's do this. Let's, uh, let's run this bore in a little farther, okay? Like so, and then we'll put the bearing back a little bit. And then uh, there'll be room for uh, a retention fastener here. Okay, that makes sense, guys. So that'll be inside here, and then our fastener will be back in this area here behind this uh, this plane of the chuck. Okay, um, as you see here. Okay, so this plate would be the back here, and then we want our retaining bolt here, and our and our bearings would be something like that. Okay. Now I'm going to draw this up, okay, so don't fret. Uh, this is just kind of rough design here to kind of work out some of the uh, 
the basics of the uh, um, of the mechanism. Okay, um, and then so this this shaft is fixed. Okay, and uh, this rotates. All right. And um, so what we need is we need to duplicate this on the other side for the second chuck. So uh, our shaft kind of looks like this, right? And you can see this is this is very helpful to kind of kind of work out all the uh, all the stuff before uh, before you uh, go to the computer. Because now when I go to the computer, it's I'm just going to be plugging numbers in that uh, you know bearing diameters and. Uh, and uh, flange diameters and bolt circles and stuff like that and it's uh, it's cream cheese when you get to the computer okay um, so we still got to support this shaft we still have to support the shaft so we'll figure that out next okay so here's uh, here's our bearing housing kind of scaled up a little bit okay and we'll have a bearing here and we'll have a bearing here and then a little space in here to to retain that now, one thing I didn't talk about that's actually kind of important is how, how far apart to put these, okay? So, there's a couple considerations, right? What we don't want, we don't want this assembly to, to kind of wiggle this way, okay? So, we want it to be um, radially kind of uh, uh, firm, okay? So, if you put, if you put these together, um, you kind of lose leverage uh, with that so any play that's in the bearing kind of comes out in the whole system right so the farther apart we put these the better off we are okay now there's some limit to that obviously we don't want to make this thing you know 12 feet long or something like that so what's what's reasonable right so I tend to think of it as uh, you know whatever whatever my inner diameter is I tend to think of it as is a number of diameters, right? So when you get um, past one diameter um, and you know below ten diameters, you know that's uh, the, the the region that we're looking at. So you know what is reasonable? That's that's roughly an inch or twenty five millimeters, right? So I'm going to say that that we want one to you know maybe three three diameters, okay? between these two bearings, okay? So that's that's about approximately three inches, okay? Now I'm gonna look for uh, what I have in stock for metal to make this out of, so that will that will help me decide that, okay? So that, so the decision uh, kind of gets driven from two directions in this case, right? Is, uh, you know, what's, what's reasonable, what'll work nicely, and then what do I have? And if I only have something that's that allows two diameters, is that going to be enough, or do I have plenty of material and I can make it whatever I want, okay? So in this case, it, you know, it's just part of that decision-making process, okay? Um, so we got a bearing bore, bearing bore, uh, this is this clearance clearance, and then uh, we've got a, a pattern of tapped holes that, uh, that's going to mount the chuck here, okay? Let's measure that while we're while we're thinking about it. Now these chucks are uh, they're metric, I happen to know that, so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to measure them here. And what I'm doing is I'm measuring one side of the hole to the the same side of the hole on the opposite side there, and I got a 90, 95 millimeter, okay? So this is a 95 millimeter uh, bolt circle. Okay, and then here's the fasteners um, that pop through here. Oh, actually, that'll, that'll help too. Okay, so uh, we've got some stick out there. All right, I don't know. Can you guys see that? So there's some fastener stick out there. What do we got there? So, okay, so this thing wants to be about five-eighths of an inch thick here. Okay, that way this is fully buried uh, in, the, uh, in that flange, okay? Uh, with the, the counterbore bottomed out so I don't have to buy new screws. Mm. Right. And then, um, oh yeah, let's see here. What is the diameter of that? Let's see, what do we, oh, what size is this? That's what I was looking at, sorry. Lost my train of thought there. Okay, these are M10s. All right, so those are drill and tap M10 by, what is that, 1.5? Okay, with the pitches. Okay, 
cat, I can barely see that. 1.5, 1.5, okay. And then uh, the last thing that we need to decide is what is this outer diameter of this flange here? So we can go all the way to the outside of the truck, the, the truck, the chuck, or we can just cover the, uh, the bolt circles. It's less material and less machining if I go in here. Uh, once again, I'll probably look and see what I have. This is bigger than my scale. So that's like six and a quarter. Six and a quarter diameter. Uh, that would be our kind of maximum. Now it's got this big fat chamfer on there, so if I run the plate all the way out to the, uh, the same diameter as the chuck, it'll look kind of funny. So I'd probably run it below that, which uh, um, is six and an eighth. Okay, six and an eighth. Let me just note that. Okay. All right, so we'll look and see what I have for material in that. All right, so I think that's our bearing housing. Get that out of the way. Get that out of the way. All right, what's next? Oh, our connections to... Uh, so we got to sort these out right here. What are we going to do with that? So let's look at that next. All right. <clears throat> So, we got, uh, we got Mr. Shaft here, and I got myself a new pen. <laughs> we got Mr. Shaft like this, and it's got tapped ends like that, and we know that, let's see, what do we know? We know that, uh, that from here to here is approximately 12 inches, okay? We do know that. We, we decided that already. Okay, so what do we got here? We got a diameter here, right? And I think that's uh, 25 millimeters. Okay, so what do we got here? That's next. So we want a little shoulder. So that's about an inch. Um, I th I'm pretty sure I got some inch and a half, so let's just plan on that. Uh, I got some inch and a half coal rolled over there, so we'll make that inch and a half diameter. Okay. All right, so this is tapped. All right, so now we have to, let's see, make sure yeah, you guys can see that. All right, there's our, our laid, our, uh, our, our ways, and right, we're gonna call it our ways. All right, so now we need to, sus we need to suspend the shaft in midair here. A um, couple ways we could do that. Um, what would look cool? I mean, I suppose I could just use a piece of tubing like that, right? And then poke a hole through it like so. Now this, remember, this is fixed, right? Our ends rotate, but this is fixed. So I could put that through there and I could just weld it in. Put some tack welds on that and then keep it in place. Is that going to be firm enough? That looks kind of funky though, because if that's 12 and this is, you know, ideally it would be something that's, that covers up this whole mess here. So we don't have so much uh, material hanging over on the ends is kind of what I'm thinking. So maybe I put two of these, right? Um, so I put one down here, and then I put one down here, something like that. What do you think of that? Yeah, that could work. Yeah, that wouldn't be too bad. Then I just got to bore a some holes through a couple pieces of tubing. Uh, I, once again, I have to look at my materials and see what I have. So, uh, um, we'll go from there. So, let, all right, that, that works. And I think we said, what did we say? Let's, let's look at our, uh, our design pad here. Uh, okay, what we said, uh, so we're about six inches off of the, uh, off of the, uh, the ways. All right, so. That's six inches. Okay, to there. All right. Um, all right. So now, next question: What size is that, uh, and how do we connect that? So, uh, I mean, like I said, I could just tack weld it on there. It's, it's, uh, it's going to be dedicated. So, um, okay, I'll think about that a little bit. All right, so hey, we're almost ready to go to the computer here, guys, uh, and do some uh, do some design. So uh, we've decided a lot of stuff in just a few minutes. Okay, there's our original. Okay, we've got lengths, uh, distance off of the ways, uh, extra material, uh, distance to the floor. Okay, uh, 
um, separation between the chucks. All right, got that. And we've got our uh, how we do our uh, individual rotation. Um, we picked out the bearings. We know what's we know what size they are because we have them. All right, um, and then a little more detail on the, this uh, this mounting flange. Okay, we've got some diameters. Uh, oh, we need a diameter there too, don't we? All right. All right, so let's put that on there. Let's say question mark. How big is that? Um, once again, that'll probably be driven by uh, um, what material I have uh, on hand for that. Okay, so we'll uh, leave that as a, leave that as a question. Okay. Um, and then uh, we've got our our stanchions. Okay. Uh, that are going to hold this shaft up uh, up above the ways. Okay, so uh, I don't know. It's looking pretty good. I think I'm going to go hit the computer and uh, see what I come up with. And then uh, you know, once I get this thing fully designed, I'll share the design with you guys, and then uh, we're going to put this thing together.